axis. <laughs> of course, the most safe place for the king is a8 to be able to protect b7 pawn with rook if necessary. g5, castle, rook g6. Well, those who attended my evening sessions, uh, or I mean recent sessions, two, three days ago, they have already seen this kind of maneuver. Uh, okay, I will repeat it uh, for you a bit later. This is a very important thing. Rook G6. But now the main goal is to let the other rook to go to B8. In B2, one rook B. King h1, h5. And now it's quite difficult to offer anything for white. On the other hand, we have very clear plan with black, just, just g4, open up and deliver mate somehow. Queen a4, rook b3, well, it takes way too much time. And it's just possible to provoke a7, a6. Spending three tempos like that. One, two, three. White would provoke black to play a6. That's all. It's not made. It's not a real weakness, just nothing. So let me show you the final of the game. Queen d2, g4. Queen c2 back, not many things to do. Take, take, knight e5, f4, queen c8. And everything is clear now. Bishop f1, trying to prevent queen h3. Black to play and win. Yes, knight c4 and queen h3 now. That's it. Bishop, queen g4 is also good, I believe. But after queen f2, the game is not over yet. Oh, sorry, queen g2, of course. This is the simplest thing. So, of course, I have no intention to say that black is better right now after bishop c3. It's a double-edged position and it's very complicated. But it's way easier to play with black. We have a very clear plan. Long castle, prophylaxis against uh, attack. On b7, 